Autoregressive distributed lag, or ARDL models, have been a popular component of EBUs since their introduction in EBUs 9. Indeed, our extensive explanation of ARDL models and their relationship with co-integration models is by far the most popular post on the EBUs blog. In EBUs 13, we've extended the ARDL estimation procedure to include more features. The largest of these is the introduction of nonlinearities or asymmetries to estimation, so-called Nardal models. Rather than go into an in-depth discussion of the theoretical model behind Nardal and its use to practitioners in this video, we will, instead, refer you to the eBuse blog, linked below. However, we will give a demonstration of how to use Nardal in eBuse 13. To begin, we'll obtain some macroeconomic data from the Federal Reserve of St. Louis database, FRED. We'll first create a quarterly work file with data from 1970 until 2020. Next, we'll open FRED in eViews and retrieve a series on real consumption, real GDP, and government expenditure. Once they're in our work file, we'll rename them so that we can recognize them a little easier. First, we'll estimate a standard ARDL model with log consumption as our dependent variable and log GDP and log expenditure as the regressors. We click on Quick Estimate Equation, change the estimation method to ARDL and then enter our variables in log form so that we can perform the analysis in percent change. Rather than specifying the lags of the dependent variable and regressors that will be used in the ARDL specification, we will allow eViews to determine the most appropriate lag structure, up to a maximum of four lags each, since we have quarterly data. We will also add a set of seasonal dummies as fixed regressors using the built-in atExpand function in eViews to generate the dummies, dropping the last to avoid the dummy variable trap. The combination of these dummies, alongside using a restricted constant as the trend specification, implies the co-integrating relationship will include the constant, but the remaining quarterly dummies will be treated as short-run regressors. Clicking OK produces the standard least squares output from the ARDL estimation, displaying the intertemporal dynamics regression. We can see that four lags of real consumption and one lag of GDP and government expenditure were chosen. ARDL is often used as a tool to explore the error correction relationship between variables, and we can view this relationship in eViews by clicking on View, ARDL Diagnostics, Error Correction Results. We can also view the co-integrating relationship by clicking on View, ARDL Diagnostics, Co-integrating Relation. We won't delve into the interpretation of these views and will again refer to the eViews blog for more details. However, we will note that in the Error Correction form, the long-run impact of a change in real GDP on real consumption is close to 1. We'll click the Name button to add this equation to our work file. Now, we'll estimate the same equation, but this time we allow both the long-run and short-run impact of government expenditure to differ depending whether the change in spending was positive or negative. We again click on Quick Estimate Equation and change the method to ARDL. We enter our variables again, but this time we add government expenditure as an asymmetric regressor, allowing the asymmetry to impact both long-run and short-run coefficients. This will instruct eViews to perform Nardal estimation instead of simple ARDL. The dynamics of a Nardal estimation mean that intertemporal dynamics regression form cannot be displayed, 
so it eviews displays the conditional error correction form of a Nardal equation by default. We'll also bring up our ARDL estimation and display the conditional error correction form for comparison. Both the long run and short run component coefficients on consumption and GDP are very similar to our original estimation. But the impact of government spending is structurally different. We now have two sets of coefficients for the change in expenditure, one for positive changes and one for negative changes, in both long run and short run forms. We can test whether this asymmetry in the coefficients for government expenditure is a valid assumption by using the built-in symmetry test. We click on View, ARDL Diagnostics, Symmetry Test. The results show the test results for both long run and short run. In our case, we failed to reject the null hypothesis of symmetry in both long run and short run components, implying our decision to add government expenditure in a nodal estimation was questionable. A second new feature added to ARDL estimation is the inclusion of the dynamic multiplier graph. This feature is available for both standard symmetric ARDL estimation and NARDL. The dynamic multiplier graph is used to show the marginal cumulative impact of aggressor on the dependent variable, and how that cumulative impact changes the further you get from the initial impact. It is similar to an impulse response analysis used in VAR analysis. To view a dynamic multiplier graph, we open our standard ARDL equation and click on View, ARDL Diagnostics, Dynamic Multiplier Graph. This brings up a dialog where we can set some options. We'll increase the horizon to 50 quarters and click OK. We can see the initial dynamics of the impact of both coefficients are somewhat bumpy before both enter a parabolic trajectory towards their long-term limits.